Welcome to our lecture online. Getting to Mars is definitely challenging, but it's nothing like trying to land on Mars. Landing on Mars does not have a good success rate. By now, approximately 50% of all attempts have been successful for various reasons, which means 50% have failed. So let's take a look at the history of the attempts to land something on Mars. There's been 21 attempts over the years, and it started back in 1962. Now, that was pretty um, adventurous, I would say, because the technology was very new. Just getting to Mars was brand new. And so, yes, indeed, uh, the Soviet Union in 1962 tried to land a spacecraft on Mars, but they didn't even get away from the orbit of the Earth. So they were stuck in the orbit. They couldn't get going. They couldn't turn on the afterburners and send itself to Mars. So that failed, not because they weren't able to land. They just weren't able to get to Mars. Then, uh, almost 10 years later, um, the Soviet Union started attempting again to make landings with Mars 2, Mars 3, Mars 6, and Mars 7, all within a uh, two-launch uh, window period. In 1971, the orbiters were both successful, but the landing had problems. On Mars 2, the lander actually crashed, so they weren't able to slow down enough and land correctly. And the, uh, the other one, uh, Mars 3, they did have a soft landing, but they lost communication upon the landing, which may imply that the landing may not have been as soft as was claimed. It may have come in pretty hard, and things may have been jarred so tremendously that the communication equipment simply broke. Uh, so they were not able to make any communication after the landing. So either it crashed, or it had a pretty hard landing and they weren't able to maintain communication. But two years later with Mars 6 and Mars 7, instead of using orbiters and depositing the lander from an orbit around Mars, they had two flybys and they sent the spacecraft, the landers off from the flyby spacecraft. The first one lost contact during landing. Now during landing, that makes sense because you have to go to the atmosphere, a lot of heat is generated. A lot of things can go wrong on the descent through the atmosphere and perhaps the communication equipment was damaged from the enormous amount of heat generated and didn't survive that portion of the landing. And then on the second flyby in uh, uh, 1973 with Mars 7, the release, the lander was released too early. It actually missed the planet and never ended up landing. So that is probably still in orbit around the sun. The first real success on landing on Mars came with Viking 1 and Viking 2. They were huge successes for a number of reasons. First of all, the, uh, the, orbital, the orbiters were successful in getting to orbit and sending back tremendous amount of data and information from the uh, instrumentation on board of the orbiters. And the two Vikings that landed about 4,000 miles apart had tremendous success in doing all kinds of experimentation over long periods of time, trying to determine if life actually exists or is possible to exist on the surface. All that was tremendous success. They almost had a 100% success rate on all of the testing. We'll get into the details of that later. But that was amazing that they were able to set down both of these spacecraft on the surface and they maintained the ability to use them for years after they landed. Now, Phobos 1 and 2 in 1988, notice the big gap between 1975 and 1988. The Soviet Union sent both these spacecraft, uh, but they lost communication before the landers were deployed. So we don't know if they were successful or they were even able to send them off. It looked like they were not even able to send off the, uh, the landers from the spacecraft. Then in 1996, Mars 96, the Soviet Union had again an attempt to land, but they weren't able to leave Earth's orbit. You can see that that happens once in a while with the Soviet uh, spacecraft. They probably weren't able to get the valves or the commands correct in order to get the rockets to work to send them on a mission to Mars. But then again, tremendous success. Most of us will remember these two names, Pathfinder and Sojourner. Pathfinder is the lander, Sojourner is that small little uh, automated uh, robot that was able to, rover that was able to travel very, very slowly over a very small region of the surface, but the, it was able to get to some rocks, drill some holes, and do some analysis uh, from that, and they were able to 
learn a lot about the geology of the planet using Pathfinder and Sojourner. That was back in 1996. I think they landed in 97. And so again, a huge success. So at this point, we had Viking 1 and 2 and the Pathfinder with Sojourner that made very successful missions. It's Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth? Really? Okay. Well, Sojourner Truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, but again, it was a huge success. I do remember watching this on television and, and the command would take 10 minutes. So they would send the command to the rover. The rover would receive the command and move just a couple of inches and then wait for the next command. And then they, will, they would get the signal back and the television cameras back as to where it was. And it would very carefully maneuver the rover around the little pebbles and rocks that uh, were getting in its way. So then we go to 1999, we had the Mars Polar Lander and that was a fail to land. So we're not able to land the uh, Polar Lander correctly. So that was a fail. And then we had the Mars Express in 2003, uh, correctly went into orbit around the planet, but we lost communication after release of the, uh, of the lander. So that was also a fail. And then again, we had tremendous success with the two rover Spirit and Opportunity. Again, those are two names that almost everybody knows. Uh, both of the rovers lasted for many years after they uh, landed on the surface. They claimed that they were only supposed to last for three months. Of course, they do that just to be on the safe side, but they went way beyond any any expectation. Obviously, there were all kinds of problems with dust on the solar panels and one wheel getting stuck and so forth. But not besides that, there were some tremendous victories and a lot of the engineers were able to get around some of the technical problems they began to experience while they were roaming around on the surface. I think the two combined probably covered about 50 kilometers on the surface, about 30 miles, which is just absolutely incredible. So again, they landed successfully, deployed successfully, and used uh, the rovers were used for years after they landed. Then we had an attempt, I believe this was from the Chinese uh, space agency, Phobos Grunt in 2007, but it wasn't able to leave Earth orbit, so we don't know if it would have been able to land. And then in 2011, uh, we have another rover, Curiosity, again a name that's very famous. It landed uh, about 2011-2012 time frame successfully and was able to be deployed successfully on the surface, so it's really great. Then we have ExoMars in 2016, I believe that was a European um, a satellite, and uh, the lander end, ended up crashing, again, uh, very challenging to land correctly on the surface. The big problem is, of course, you're trying to land on a planet, Mars, which is much bigger than the Moon, so you come in at a much higher velocity. The atmosphere is very, very thin. Even though it's very thin, you still have to deal with the tremendous heat generated by plowing through the atmosphere, but it doesn't slow you down enough, so now you have to have a mechanization to slow you down, and you have to be able to then slow enough to a landing speed at the very end. Again, we'll get into the details of that. Very challenging, and so it's not a surprise that some of the landers do not successfully land on the surface. Then we have Inside in 2018, which was a successful landing that was not a rover, but uh, it uh, was able to deploy on the surface. Then the Chinese were able to successfully land in 2020 with a rover that's still active on the surface. And then the latest Perseverance, uh, again, a successful landing with a rover. And on top of that, a small little helicopter that was able to fly to multiple flights on the surface. It's just absolutely amazing that they were able to do that. I never thought that that would even be possible in that very thin atmosphere of Mars, but they managed. It's a very light device with cameras and they're able to get enough of a lift from the blades. Uh, yeah, just an absolute engineering marvel. So if we try to summarize, there were a total of 21 attempts to fly to Mars and land. 11 of those were failures. One was a partial success, meaning there was a relatively soft landing on the surface, but the communication went dead 110 seconds after landing, about 20 seconds after transmission started, with a partial image of a single picture being sent. Um, and then there were nine successful landings on the surface and deployment afterwards. So you can see that perhaps a little less than 50% success rate. Now, we don't, that's not all due to the difficulty in landing. It's also due that you have to get to the, the, the planet in the first place. Of course, if you can't leave Earth's orbit, then you're not going to get to Mars. But you can see that it's still very challenging. Just because you send the spacecraft to Mars to land doesn't mean, first of all, you're going to get there. Secondly, you 
correctly, get to the planet, get into orbit around the planet, and deploy the lander successfully, and then can you make it through the landing process. If I remember right, one of the landings uh, went haywire, went wrong, something went wrong because of a unit conversion incorrectly in the software, and uh, so therefore they were probably using metric units instead of uh, imperial units or vice versa and something went wrong and the thing crashed on the surface. So uh, for various reasons it is a big challenge to land on the surface of Mars. Lately it's uh, the failures have been fewer, successes have been greater and hopefully that trend will continue. And that is the way it is when you try to land on Mars. I think it was the European one, uh, so I believe, let's see here, which one was it? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's ExoMars. Why would the European one use Imperial units? They had some sort of unit conversion problem, and um, yeah. It, it could simply be that it was not just from Imperial to metric unit, it was just from one unit in metric to another, there might have been a unit conversion that was incorrect. And, caused a, a misreading. I think there was another misreading in altitude. I think it was one of the American spacecraft that tried to land and uh, there was a misread on altitude and uh, they, yeah, they crashed because of that as well. So yeah, it's, a, it's tricky and you have to be absolutely perfect in all respects to land on a planet.